DW Radio, your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to WDW Radio Live. I am Lou Mangello, and this is the WDW Newscast for Wednesday, October 16th, 2013. I'm here to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience, bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this live broadcast every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Also visit the website over at www.radio.com. There you can find the audio podcast, my new Disney animated videos, blog, books, uh, CDs, special events, the free mobile app for your iPhone or Android device, and much more. Again, you can find everything over at www.radio.com. Tonight's podcast is once again brought to you by our good friends over at audible.com, where you can get a free, get that free audiobook download by visiting audibletrial.com slash radio. They've got like 100,000 titles to choose from, tons of great Disney books, the Ridley Pearson series, How to Be Like Walt, Lots of other great books in there as well. Again, you can sign up for free, cancel anytime, get your free book over at audibletrial.com slash Radio for your iPhone, Android, or other MP3 player device. All right, let's get right into this week's Walt Disney World news, which of course comes from Japan because the big, the huge, the monstrous news this week was from the D23 Expo in Japan about Avatar coming to Walt Disney World. Now, obviously, we've known about this when it was announced at D23 Expo in Anaheim back in 2011, and we've seen a little bit of, not even really concept art, but just some sort of discussions about what Avatar Land or Pandora would be until now, because there's more details and a new teaser video for what is going to be the largest expansion in the history of Walt Disney World as Avatar Land, or Pandora as I like to call it, is going to have new attractions, entertainment, nighttime activities, and lots more. And listen, even if you weren't a fan of Avatar, you got to remember, it's still the highest grossing film of all time with about $2.7 billion, with a B, dollars in the bank. So before we get into looking at some of the concept art, talking about what we uh, learned, I want to show you the video that was shown over at the D23 Expo, and then we'll follow up with uh, some discussion and some more concept art. So... You know, you know, you watch that, and I think you can't help but get excited. I was watching the chat room as it was going by, and I saw some people saying, you know, I've never seen Avatar before, and I don't think that you have to. And this goes back to what I said when this was announced back in 2011. There was a lot of discussion online. Some people not happy about the idea of Avatar Land, although they hadn't seen any of this concept art, because I think what this really is is about not about the movie, not about the plot, not about the characters, but it's about the environment. This is all going to be ab about this world of Pandora. And I wonder if, as you see the concept art and you watch uh, the video like that go by, if you almost sort of took out the fact that it's Avatar the movie, would that get more people excited, right? Because they say, you know, they, they think Avatar was a film that maybe they didn't connect to, they didn't see, but you look at some of this concept art, these bioluminescent lights at night, these floating these floating mountains, these waterfalls, that is really what should be getting people excited. So let's talk a little bit about what we know is going to be coming. Because again, you are going to have this world of Pandora that is going to be, I think, a very different experience from the daytime at night. We know that we're going to have two new attractions. One is going to be this uh, attraction where you sort of fly on a banshee. You're looking at this here. You saw it in the concept art as you're flying through the world of Pandora. If you looked carefully at the video, it almost looked as though they were looking at a screen much like Soren in, in Epcot and over at Disney California Adventure, that same type of almost IMAX-like screen. The other is going to be another a new boat ride. So think sort of a Pirates of the Caribbean type boat ride on the Discovery River. Again, if you're looking at the concept art here, Look at how beautiful this environment is at night. That is really what this is going to do. It's not just give us new attractions, new entertainment, but it's going to make Animal Kingdom a now full-day park. And I don't mean that it's a half-day park. Don't get me wrong. I still think Animal Kingdom is a full-day park, but it makes it a, a true full-day park because it can be open later to have all these nighttime experiences. And that is really what we're going to get. These bioluminescent plants at night that you can be able to walk through 
these forests and the jungle. More importantly, the tree of life at night is going to be sort of that mother tree. It's going to have electronics on it. It's going to have night projections on it. So I think the castle show uh, in the Magic Kingdom, those same types of projections. But more importantly, too, there's going to be additional inter- entertainment beyond what we're getting just in Pandora. There's going to be a new nighttime show, live music, floating lanterns, water screens, again, think sort of world of color, new animal imagery, plus you're always going to have an add-on to an already existing super popular experience, which is the safari. There's now going to be a nighttime safari with new elements that can only be experienced at night. There's going to be live performers over on Discovery Island, and I think, too, what we're seeing, and yes, if I sound excited, it's because I am, we are just scratching the surface of what this is going to be. And if you look at some of this concept art very, very carefully, there's a lot of very intricate details in here, not just to get about things from the film, but things sort of hidden in the background in terms of the environments that you are going to experience, multi-sensory types of things, and the landscape is going to expand, not just horizontally, but more importantly, vertically as well. Think about what they did over in New Fantasyland. And I have loved this idea and the marriage from the very beginning I was very, very vocal early on when I heard so many people criticizing this concept when they hadn't moved one piece of dirt or hadn't shown any concept art like this as yet. It was hard for me to understand people being critical of something they hadn't seen before. I think what this is is in true Disney fashion. It is beautiful to look at, and it should get you excited because I think what this represents is a great marriage with James Cameron. Like Disney, he's a master storyteller, right? Incredible attention to detail. And look, right now, he's working hard on preparing three Avatar sequels. So this franchise is far from dead. Actually, it's almost in its infancy, with one already being the most popular uh, grossing film of all time. Three, The first of the next trilogy is going to be released in December 2016. So what they're doing now is they're scheduling to shoot all of these simultaneously. The first date for Avatar 2 is December 2016. So this new land, which is going to open in 2017, is going to promote the third and fourth film. And it's also going to be the sort of, they'll time it maybe with the uh, the home video release of Avatar 2. And certainly Avatar is still very popular. I wonder how many rentals of Avatar Uh, Disney fans went out to go and get this past week after this announcement. So I am incredibly excited about this, especially when you see here, you see Joe Rohde and James Cameron looking at that scale model, looking at the detail, looking how green and lush it is, and then wondering how that is going to be transformed into something like this at night, right? Again, we've got multiple new attractions, a boat ride. I'm so excited to see them utilizing the Discovery River once again, which has unfortunately sat pretty much empty since the Discovery River taxis closed a number of years ago, the Tree of Life. So they're going to really sort of incorporate all of Disney's Animal Kingdom into this. I see people like Beatrice Feeney. It's about to become huge. Listen, I think this is a very, very good thing. Whether you like the film, whether you've seen the film or not, it doesn't matter, right? This adds that missing element that Disney's Animal Kingdom was set to have for, from the very beginning, this land of mythical animals. That's what the Banshees are, right? That's what the Navi are. There's these mythical creatures that are now going to come to life. And if you are a fan of Avatar, one of the big things that fans were disappointed about early on was they could not sort of connect to the experience in a, in a much more physical way, right? Star Wars fans, we had Star Wars weekends and conventions. Harry Potter had Harry Potter Land over at Universal Studios. A lot of other movie franchises had a tactile, physical location in a theme park somewhere, whether it's Universal, SeaWorld, Walt Disney World, Disneyland, wherever it may be. Now that is going to come to pass for Avatar. And I think what this is also going to do is, is going to create an, an entirely new a set of Avatar fans, more importantly, James Cameron fans. And I think this is just the beginning of what this marriage of Cameron and Disney, much like Lucas and Disney, when they first started, eventually is going to be. But I'm really curious, after seeing the video and after seeing the concept art, especially for those people who may have been somewhat negative about this when it did first come out, what are your feelings now, right? Do Does seeing this world and seeing this video, does that start to get you... Excited. So Chief Powhatan says, label it as Pandora instead of Avatar Land and opinions will change. And I think that's what you are going to see. Uh, I think that's exactly what it is going to be. It's going to be James Cameron World of Avatar. But when you walk into it, 
it's going to be Pandora. And, and I, I sort of analogize it to Cars Land, right? Think about Cars Land over at Disney's California Adventure. You may not have been the biggest Cars movie fan, but you walk into that space and you cannot help get, but get excited and feel as though you have stepped into that film I think that is very much what is going to happen here. You don't need to have seen or known or loved the movie or have to reference to any character because that's not what is going to be based on. Uh, I see some people wondering why this was announced in Japan as opposed to here. I think there's a lot of reasons for it. It could be a timing issue. Uh, they want to sort of, obviously, for the first expo in Japan, they want to have some sort of blockbuster announcement. I think this is it. And it doesn't really matter where it was announced because we all got the information that next morning or overnight and uh, the buzz has begun and, and continued on, uh, you know, almost really uh, a week later, from uh, from when the uh, announcement has come out. I'm trying to watch in the chat room. Some people are saying that they feel amazed about it. Um, they love Animal Kingdom. They are looking forward to seeing an expansion like this. Again, I think we forget that the expansion is going to be huge. You, you look at this concept art and these models and you just get a sense of just how big this is going to be. There's a lot of room for expansion in Disney's Animal Kingdom, especially over by where Festival of the Lion King is or soon will be was that area over by Camp Minnie Mickey. There is a lot of space back there to do a lot with. And again, think about even if you don't like Avatar Land, Animal Kingdom is now going to be a park that you can enjoy and explore at night. Look at the Tree of Life. Look at the live entertainment. Imagine how Everest Discovery River is going to look at night with these bioluminescent lights. Uh, I am very, very, very excited about this. I'm also very optimistic about this because, you know, Disney has a tendency to, uh, when they, they bring these out, they don't tell you everything, right? They give you enough to get excited and then they wow you when you get there. I felt that way in New Fantasyland. I certainly felt that way over in Cars Land and Buena Vista Street. And I think the same is going to happen here. I would love to keep this conversation going some more. We're going to uh, we're gonna end the recording here. We're going to talk some more with people in the chat room, but I would love for you to comment either on our YouTube channel or on the blog or email me, lou at www.radio.com or call the voicemail, 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. If you, have a, you want to sort of share your take on Avatar, I will play it on the next WDW Radio podcast. Stay in the chat room. We're going to keep on talking. Listen, don't forget also, visit www.radio.com for videos. I've got new videos there and up on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and comment there, including a new hidden detail and reference over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm going to show you the secret subway over on uh, what used to be New York Street. Also, be sure and subscribe to the show on iTunes, rate and review it. More importantly, spread the word. Tell your friends and visit us every Wednesday live at WDW Radio Live, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I want to thank you guys again so very much for watching. I am Lou Mangello. So until next time, see ya. Thank you.